Welcome to Ninon Speaks. I'm your host, Ninon de Verde Rosa, and my co-host is AJ Dean. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome to Ninon Speaks. I'm Ninon, your host, and of course, right next to me, this beautiful um, young lady with the long, dark hair, and those, she's got those fabulous lashes on. Does she look cool? Her name is AJ, and uh, she actually does all the introductions. I don't ever introduce anybody because I can't remember their names. <laughs> That's just a joke. Uh, starting with my jokes already. AJ, go ahead, introduce uh, our guest. Thank you, lovely Ninon. I really appreciate that. I am, I am so excited tonight. We, it is my great pleasure to introduce the international best-selling author and hybrid publicist who is also virtual. He's a virtual and live event master MC, Mr. Jim T. Chong. He's absolutely fabulous. He specializes in business solutions, and he is also the host, Ninon, of Take Center Stage Writer's Journey event, and that's taking place right there where you are in Las Vegas. Wow, wait a second. We're taking place right now. Are we not center stage right now, Jim? <laughs> wow, yeah, we're definitely, this is, this is the place this to is be. This is center stage right now. This is it with all three of us. Absolutely amazing. Um, and I've seen this, this photograph next to you, which is called Take Center Stage. What exactly does that mean? You got it up there three times, so you must like it. <laughs> well, first off, um, I will tell you, uh, Take Center Stage was a book that uh, I had conceived actually many years ago, uh -huh. and it was all about really helping people uh, take the stage. And actually, there was the subtitles of that original version. It was Because the World Needs Some Heroes. And uh, what we discovered, it was really built for people that really did some great things, but mm -hmm. usually people that are doing great things, they're not edifying themselves usually. They're just really saying, wow, I'm just doing what I normally need to do. And so it really was just a, just a statement about, hey, encouraging people to take center stage because the world does need some heroes. And the original concept was actually designed by uh, Believe in Your Dreams uh, uh, founder, that's a publishing entity, uh, Nicole Peters, who will also be part of this because what has happened from there is um you know we uh, are now part of what's called the american uh i'm sorry the action uh, on film mega festival which you know t all too well <laughs> absolutely absolutely when i see take center stage and what you're explaining it's a little bit what we do actually because we're giving you center stage we're giving you publicity to be out there but we do it through the internet and the reason we do it through the internet is because it can go all over the world. So we've got you all over the world. We can put you anywhere we want you. So we're sort of, you know, so that's what we're rather actually taking a leaf out of your book as well. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, this is really great. And, you know, this whole concept really is really great. A shout out to Del Weston and uh, Teresa Weston as well, just for putting on this fabulous event right there in Las Vegas. And mm -hmm. we hope that what happens in Las Vegas doesn't just stay there. It gets out because we really want to highlight deserving authors, script writers, and we want them to be nominated. We're going to give them an incredible award at this event as part of the Action on Film Festival. This is a, a major event that's going to be taking place there. Now, when is, it, when is this event? Because Del Webb, you know, he was just on my show a couple of weeks ago. This guy's an incredible guy. Oh. He, is just so, he is so kind and so good to the industry and to people out there. And um, we, I guess we all sort of, four of us are kind of, well, five, including his wife, we're all kind of doing the same thing. Thing. We're all trying to give people the opportunity and get them out there and, and give them an award for what they have achieved. Yeah, well, uh, you know, the whole event goes from the 26th through the 31st, ending with an incredible closeout wrap-up party at midnight. Okay, <laughs> that's uh, technically Sunday morning at, one, uh, at 12 uh, midnight. But uh, basically, our event fits in there July 29th through the 31st. And there's just so many going things going on. There's like over 15 festivals under that one umbrella, several really high-profile events. Um, you know, um, there's, uh, you know, just some great things honoring like Asian uh, film, uh, film producers. Shout out to Lorene Wu, as well as uh, right, yeah. Amy, Amy Lee uh, McCorkle, who also is also an award-winning 
author as well. She was actually nominated. It's going to be uh, uh, put on center stage. You know something? I'm going to interrupt you a second, um, sure. Jim. Is that we don't, uh, and you just did it, we don't encourage the Asian filmmakers that much. We, but, and the reason I don't know, I think the reason is because they're not pushy people. The, I, the Asian, I was in Hong Kong um, for a couple of weeks. I've never met such hospitable people and so nice, but they're very low key. They're very quiet. They're very sort of, you know, they don't rush. Is that the reason why we don't really um, push them as much as we should with, with like we do our, every other race? Well, you know, um, going along with that, I think a lot of times Asians are more known as uh, quiet, right? Yeah, um, yes. They pretty much just get the job done. Uh, you know, I actually have a moniker. I go by the walk star. That's W-O-K-S-T-A-R. Party like a. Yeah. <laughs> walk star, right? Walk um, star, I love that. Yeah. But so, so I've been representing a lot of different Asian communities and, I and love stuff as that. well. Yeah. But the Asian community as a whole, um, you know, people, we're just hard workers. We're known really for hard work, being yes, able to do are. math right. Don't get us behind the wheel. We don't drive too well. <laughs> but those well, are some of the stereotypes. Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> no, but isn't that because they can't see out of the side of their eyes? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> you didn't well, know that? No, no, no. no it's not. Oh, well, they, have, they have, don't have provisional vision. They have yeah. to turn their heads to, to yeah. see. That's well, I always thought it was drive. because of yeah, I thought it was because uh, the light didn't uh, come in as much, you know, because we're always smiling like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, but, you know, um, that stereotype actually uh, came out because um, what happened was, I don't know, <laughs> I, like sometimes I, I, I even see it, you know, drivers are very cautious when they're new here. So Asian drivers are known for not going too quick. And so that's where uh, people think, okay, they're driving slow. They're kind of lost or looking around, right? And yeah. so that's where the joke came out. How do you confuse uh, an Asian man? You put him behind a wheel. wheel. <laughs> you know, so, behind the wheel of a car. <laughs> right. But I, I just like to have fun and enjoying culture in all sincerity. I've checked with a lot of community leaders. I actually wear uh, a hat um, in a lot of the uh, events that I go to and uh, uh, facilitate and MC. But the whole thing is, is getting back to your thing. I think that's why Asians are known to be uh, somewhat quiet. So I'm really yeah. excited about yeah. Asians being. Uh, being highlighted at this film. I think, I think it's wonderful because they're very, very talented. I mean, when I was in Hong Kong, you know, their fashion is amazing. They can wear a pair of jeans and they put this top on, these women, and they look so elegant. I mean, I've never seen a pair of jeans look elegant, but they have that way and they put the, the high heels on, but they have that style. Um, and and they, they keep that up, especially the younger generation. But even they, I mean, even their appearance, they look, always look so forever young. <laughs> they never get any lines, nothing. Oh, yeah. You know, and a lot of it is really um, pretty interesting because um, when you look at just the Asian culture as well and the colors that they wear is really great. Oh. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and put up one just so you can see it. This is one of the events that, that I'm at right here, right? So you see. Yeah, look at the colors. They're beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, they really are. And, um, you know, this is Eastern Way Martial Arts there in our city. Yes. Um but the whole thing is, is that um, I'm really excited just to be able to um, to give tribute to some Asian uh, producers. And I will tell you just a shout out to yes. um, to some of the, the the networks out there. I actually Please. was visiting one, um, you know, the Epoch Times and stuff. You know, they've been reporting on a lot of great things, trying to bring back true journalism. And Absolutely. I think it's perfect, you know, for what the, what they try to uh, accomplish there. But what I noticed in terms of the Asian communities and stuff, um, you know, pretty quiet, conservative in general. Yeah. But definitely there's a lot under there, you know. But they um, definitely get things done. They get oh, things yeah. done. So let's get back to you. And what is your main object in this, in this, or what you do? You do publicity, you do PR, you put on events, right? You are also a well-known writer. Yeah. So well, what is what is you what, what is your main thing that you that you're you're accomplishing and you're continuing to accomplish? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I will tell you, it goes back to what we talked about, the walk star, W-O-K, right? Has a little yeah. Asian fare, flair. But really, um, the whole context of that is what do you do with a cooking walk? You bring things together to make something better. Yeah. 
And really in everything through the journey, you know, I just really love to help people promote their story, tell their story. And so that's why it's really important uh, for me to be able to really understand the significance of what people do. And here's what I really understood. A lot of people that are doing great, great things, you know, like Kirby yeah. Delaney, world record brick breaker. She doesn't come out and say, look at who I am, you know, sure. mm-hmm. but what it is, I really love to help people really accentuate their story, gain the high visibility that they deserve. Because there are yeah. so many people who do great things, and they are really behind everything, even they though they're leading the charge. They, they are not right. noticed. And the reason being for that is because they really don't know how to do um, media, social media. They don't know how to get out there. Um, AJ and I have learned a lot about social media. Without social media, you don't get out there, right, AJ? Yes. I mean, yeah. you have to do the social media out there. Otherwise, you, you, you're a dead duck. Yeah, it's really it's really true. I have a small digital marketing team called Factor X uh, Media Group. And, you know, it's really important to understand just how social media works today, how digital marketing works today. And I'm just really impressed of what you're doing here, Ninon. And one thing, uh, Ninon, is that right? <laughs> oh, I got it right. All right. You know, um, you know and AJ, just such a beautiful person just you know great heart I knew it and I was just so impressed um just that you had the prep time and everything you are doing thing like stellar I'm gonna give you guys a round of applause uh, what we're doing we want to make it professional and we've kept a very small crew and the reason being we don't want any confusion we both know what each other what we're very very similar we're we're actually like sisters you know it's it's very easy to work with AJ and AJ finds it easy to work with me and we make it that way because we both want to accomplish the same thing right AJ absolutely and you've helped me so much Nina and you've brought my game up Um, you have high standards and I love that you have a high work ethic as well that's beautiful and you're teaching me so much. So thank you. My gratitude and grateful to you. Absolutely. On that, I want to ask, I know AJ has got a couple of questions she wants to ask you. You sent her a couple of questions. AJ, go ahead and, and, and your little your list you have. Yes, thank you so much, Ninon. I uh, wanted to ask um, Mr. Chong, what is your background? How did you get into publicity? You know, um, kind of like what I mentioned, a lot of people I saw wasn't really getting the attention that they deserved. And naturally, you know, of course, I'm Asian, so I love programming. I had a software company. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when I moved into a, a city um, in San Joaquin Valley in Sacramento, um, what I realized was I really need to get involved in the community. And so naturally, I, I've, I've Fortunately, when I grew up, I really enjoyed speaking. And so, you know, um, I started emceeing, facilitating a lot of things, getting involved with a lot of community endeavors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for business, I I, I professionally have made presentations. But then as I started doing that, I thought, wow, you know, I I did a lot of it benevolently. I thought, wow, this is really great. I'm doing something really good to help, uh, you know, philanthropic. Yeah, the community and Mm -hmm. pulling communities and stuff together. But then I realized a lot of people that were doing great things really needed help. And that's when I started getting into really interviewing people. And I had a a radio show on Money 105.5, part of Salem Media Group in Greater Sacramento. And, you know, I enjoyed covering a lot of things. And I realized a lot of people really, um, didn't know quite how to present themselves or were not getting the attention they needed. So that's really where it all started from community work, helping communities raise funds, and then promoting people that I thought were really deserving, you know, and I just enjoyed engaging people. And one thing, I just love seeing people like, you know, AJ meeting you, meeting you, Ninon. Oh my gosh. But, um, isn't uh, San Francisco, that has a large commu- Asian community, doesn't it? I mean, you go back to San Francisco to many, many years ago of when they first came, when the Asians first started coming to America and they sort of hit San Francisco. And then they were all taken out of San San Francisco and brought to another part of America. There was a big thing on, which wasn't, it was like camps and different things. It was not very good and it wasn't very nice what we, what the Americans did, but they did what they did. But I, I know that um, San Francisco is very, uh, very large community of the Asian community. 
Yeah, you know, that's really true. And, um, you know, I grew up in a place called Marysville, California, which many people don't know. That's really, they have the Buckeye parades and stuff. That was the first real Chinatown and San Francisco started to emerge, you know, as well. But, you know, talking about what you said, ironically enough, you know, and everything's about story. I I think, you know, stories really, really evoke emotion and it reminds us where we came from. And so that's why it's so significant. And what you've achieved, what you've achieved out of where it was, because I remember reading about this and there was a big program on, I think, PBS on one of the shows. And I remember I was fascinated because I did not know this is how the Asian people were treated. And it wasn't very nice. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing I wanted to tell you, I had a chance to write an article um, that should be coming out on uh, APA Living uh, Today, um, actually this coming week. Um, It was the first, you were talking about how Asians were being treated. It's the first city apology that Antioch, um, the the mayor gave uh, 88 points to the Chinese immigrants. And, uh, you know, I didn't realize how significant it was. I, I was called to help cover it. And I felt inspired by a personal invitation but then i saw it covered in the new york times earlier uh a couple time. weeks ago before right? prefacing it you know it's, it's about time right i mean yeah uh, finally definitely right? really about time yeah. that it was brought out absolutely yeah. And, you know, one of the things I, you know, again, it made me uh, study this and it's hard to believe today there is a lot going on, you know, but today in today's world, but, you know, one of the things that they, that I was reading about, they literally had a curfew for Chinese people in the city. And and I don't want to just single this out. This was happening everywhere, but where literally they had a curfew. So there were tunnels made so that the Chinese people can get home from work, you know, during those times. And then there was one time uh, what what, what happened was, was they were going to kill the women, (laughs) but then they decided here's what we're going to do they just said look you got till 3 p.m on this date be out of the town because we're burning we're burning that side of the town we're burning it all down so that's what they were kind of you know it's it's quite it's quite a a horror story but it's quite a story and just by accident i happened to fall upon it and i was fascinated because i didn't realize that people actually do these things and and it's, it's like we're just people you know, I, I always make the statement that not any one of us in this entire world choose to be born whatever color we're born and whatever, wherever we're born. We just have to deal with it. <laughs> That's all we got to do. But we don't choose that. I agree, Ninan. And, you know, some of the old way of thinking is no longer applies, you know. Right. That, you know, yes. Yes. You know, um, have you ever seen the Shen Yen production? It's a beautiful production. They usually advertise it all over the place. It's yeah. a troop. So you've seen that yes. from uh, New- from New York City. And yeah. it tries to raise issues of things that are happening in China. And one thing, like what we're talking about, you know, as we come together here, I mean, yeah. I am so grateful to be living in America today still. There's a lot of things going on with the pandemic. It really helped me reflect on the things that were really most- It woke us all up, didn't it? <laughs> oh, kind of really, right? Of what can happen and what can't happen in a little while. <laughs> in yeah. one year, what can change in one year? Yeah. And it's just very, it's just very exciting to see, um, you know, f- for this learning experience, like it was a very trying time, very sobering time. My dad actually passed away um, mm-hmm. right after Christmas this year. And so, um, you know, he was already having a tough time. So not really any quality of life. So it'd been really challenging, yeah. but you know, what we're talking about in terms of the history is so, it's just so rich, not just with the Asian people, but just all of America. Everybody. I yeah. think it was a change the whole, the whole world. Go ahead, JJ. I'm so sorry for your loss, uh, Jim. I'm so sorry for your loss. And um, I, he, your father was a wonderful man because look at you. You're there you go. a prize example, right, AJ? <laughs> yeah, and I speak English not too not too bad, I think. You speak English very you speak English better than I do, and I'm English. <laughs> oh, I love your ac- accent, you know. And um, you know, but but Ninon, you know, Ninon, um, yeah. I'll try to get that right. But you know, the whole thing is is that I'm really inspired by what you have done in your your lifetime too. I mean, I'm just like looking at all the things you've accomplished, your spokesperson for this, spokesperson for that, helping kids, helping develop certain things, doing things like this, giving people true center stage here yes. to yes. really be seen and, and really even giving me time. I feel so honored. I feel well, blessed to be amongst it, you and greatness, AJ, as well, for sure. Yes, you know? Since we've got you here, Jim, 
can can we help you in any way of how we can um you you must have a lot of things that you want to do um can we find out what they are and can we kind of help you with that through our network yes well one thing um we, uh, you can do is we have a a site now I'll, I'll go ahead and put it back up but one of the things we're trying to do is really award those that are deserving authors and we really um we really do uh, we really do want to be able to um, honor them. So go to our website, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put it up here um, and, and nominate them because there's so many people that have written books. And unfortunately, these stories are just kept uh, hidden um, unless they've really become a really big bestseller. But more time than ever, these stories are so very important. They're so very people, important, very, very important. People still read books Whichever yes. way it is, whether it's downloading from Amazon, because, you know, we have to remember one thing. Amazon started with books. That's how he started. That's he started right. with his whole thing was books. And he was he was. And I remember I went to his site and um, it was teaching you how to actually have your own book. And I did publish a book and uh, it was more of a, a foundation book for help people helping different foundations but um and it was called joyful volunteering mm. and that was my first book and i'm going to write another book i'm going to write a book on my biography and it's all because of aj that i'm going to write a book on my biography it's all because of aj so aj it's all you so Thank you, Ninon. Actually, it's all you, Ninon. It's, 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 it's my story, but you're the one made me do it. So when is it? So this this the writer's journey is July the 29th to July the 31st in Las Vegas. And how, uh, how can people attend, Jim? Uh, you know, they can go ahead and uh, get some tickets at TakeCenterStageWritersJourney.com. That's just right mm -hmm. over here. And yes. one thing um, we want to be able to uh, accentuate, um, you can nominate a deserving author, writer, script writer, or perhaps you yourself just want to be able to finish that book. You need a little extra attention. You can vendor there. There's a lot of great opportunity there. And, uh, you know, the whole thing is we really want to reach the writers because this is a historic time after the pandemic where I would say arguably this is one of the biggest events of this type uh, in general, but let alone following the pandemic that is being put together. And Absolutely. we want to highlight the people. You but the, know? It's funny we're talking about this because where I shoot my other show, which is called Vegas Live with Ninon um, at Quirky Minds Media, um, James Kelly is also an author. He's written many, many books, incredible books. I'm going to get him to call you or you call him. Either way, whoever calls, you can call him. I'll give you his number. Great. I'll make sure, I'll make sure AJ give him all the information. And um, he knows so many authors, but authors that you're talking about that really need the credibility that are just sort of sitting back and they they don't know how to do it or what to do, but you do and you can get them out there. And, and I think that's the object of what you're trying to do is getting all these authors out there because reading will never die. It's like music. Music won't ever die. Yeah. Well, you know, we want to bring in, you know, people, we have uh, an incredible night on, on Thursday where we have a meet and greet and get to meet some people from all over the world. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of things that are going to be planned. There's an award ceremony that evening on Thursday night. But then on Friday, we have uh, Andrea Adams Miller, who is an incredible publicist and the founder of uh, the Red Carpet Connection. She's going to be talking about how to get funded, how to get sponsorship, how to get that do -re me if you know what I mean <laughs> the money uh, because uh, you know it, it does take a lot to get a book out there and hopefully uh, you, your story will impact a lot of lives if you can get out there so hopefully you're able to do that but then we also have uh, Dr. Nicole Peters who is also launching her Believe in Her Dreams uh, uh, network um, shout out to her um, you know a Roku Fire Stick all, all types of media a new platform called Mini TV that Amazon's adopting but uh, we just just did a launch for that network and um i'm sure you probably know him but les brown was just on there well, so I, had a chance I met him actually i met les brown some few months ago 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this event is going to be awesome. She's going to be there speaking and really teaching people about how to really construct a story. You kind of have to know her. We had a launch of her party. It was supposed to be, I, I helped uh, uh, facilitate it online. Um, yeah. It was supposed to be three hours. It turned out to be six hours. Oh my goodness. Six I'm hours. Really- I'm sitting there and they, she's just having so much fun. She's just so real. Shout out Nicole Peters. But the whole thing is, is that her group, this is her dream come true. I've seen her do so many great things with her publishing entity um you know all about love power and respect uh, a women's community uh and you know i am just giving uh, uh, so much uh, credence to just the people that are writers like her uh, you know andrea yeah. adams miller that does so many incredible things as well they're there to really help and thank you uh ninon and aj dean just for having us here because you know what this is what it's all about all ships rise with the tide yes they and- do and we will put this out yeah. everywhere. I mean, yeah. we, we share it all over the place. And I know you're going to share it everywhere just to make sure everybody knows what is going on and who we're trying to help and what we're trying to do. And it's, you know, it, it's a world that you've got to open up and help other people. But isn't that what it's all about? I mean, some people think it's all about money, but it's not really. I mean, yes, you need the money to get from A to B. But at the same time, you've still got to put yourself out there and help other people. That's true. And, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Um, you know, um, uh, I'm also the publicist for Elite Publications, which is uh, founded by Jesse Bowen. He's also a grandmaster, 10th, 10, 10th degree black belt. Okay. Wow, I'm not going to mess with him. Yeah, and his last book, yeah, his last book honored uh, Grandmaster Chuck Norris. Oh, really? And, I'm yeah. never gonna, oh, good Lord, alive. And two heavy talker. This is heavy talk. <laughs> and two hundred fifty uh, other martial artists in the first book. This this time, over at the same thing, action on film, uh, fe- uh, mega festival. Uh, they're honoring Ernie Reyes, senior, and you know just so many other martial artists. So they're coming in. They're having a separate event, but. Uh, uh, Grandmaster Bowen, I'm going to call him Grandmaster here as well, uh, because, you know, he is the founder of Elite Publication, and it's the American Martial Arts Alliance uh, Institute for Instruction, but also foundation, because he wants to give back. He wants martial artists to help tell them stories there. And over here, some of them are being nominated. So we're getting a twofer here, you know, if you come down here, you know, and so that's what this is all about. Jim, I have a couple of questions. Number, I've got two actually. Number one, what is the name of your book so people can buy it? Uh-huh. And where can they get it? And question number two is uh, for you know people who are not experts, you're an expert in publicity and public relations. How can people, writers and authors and other people out in the world participate? I'm sorry, um, how can they, uh, do you have any tips Get themselves out there. Yes, uh, uh, for public relations or publicity. Any tips for the public out there? Yeah, well, definitely. You know, first off, uh, the book, uh, my first anthology, I've written in in several books and also other publications, was called Breaking Barriers, Decisions That Elevate People from Ordinary to Extraordinary. And Mm -hmm. the um, the preface was by Jim Stavall. But the second book has yet to be published. It's coming out. There's going to be a second part of that called Breaking Barriers. Um, It's uh, uh, um, The Power of Perseverance. uh, And, and, uh, you know, also, this book, Break it Takes Center Stage, will actually be coming out later this year. So that's the whole uh, exciting thing about it. So this is really launching. It's this launching, book. but you just said something really, really, really worthwhile out there. The power of perseverance. Mm-hmm. Everybody out there, all the audience who's ever watching and who's ever listening, power of perseverance is very, very important because that's something you have to have yourself. And without you doing it, nothing's going to happen because only you know what you've written, what you've done. Yes, you need other help, other people to help you. But at the same time, you've got to have the power yourself to get out there. Isn't that not true, Jim? Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, what you, um, what you just brought up here, kind of the keys, what you said, AJ, one thing is, you know, really find out, you know, depending on where you're at, you know, kind of what you want to accomplish, really understand your why. I know it sounds kind of like a little bit uh, old school, but it is true, you know, it's foundational. And, you know, understand kind of the power and the difference that your life can make. That's where I think it comes from. And from there, be confident in what you do and get out there, you know, get out there, take as many opportunities as you can to speak. All right. 
many opportunities to be able to do something tangibly uh, effective to really promote the greater good. Yeah. I believe in that, you know, and be unique, be different. You know, everyone would love in their hearts, you know, just like everyone loves to be a karaoke singer. No one wants to be the first <laughs> up there on the mic, right? But, yeah. but you, you have to really find out kind of how you want to brand yourself and what you really want to be known for, you know, and a lot of people, um, they don't have the confidence and they don't understand the power of their story. That's where it originates. And then from there, start really taking opportunities to really speak, but understand the power of your message. Make sure you take advantage of social media today. Right. And I am big on anthologies today. And like what you're doing, uh, uh, Ninon here is fabulous, you know, connect with as many people as you can as possible it doesn't matter who they are i don't know exactly which are, whether on the homeless or they've got multi-million dollar i don't know whatever but all <laughs> of you that we're all the same we're all the same yeah basically. we all come out with one breath and we all leave with one breath it's what we do in between exactly so let's, let's make an impact in between let's let's make yeah. something happen let's let's open up our gift everybody's given a gift of some sort you, yeah. you've got an incredible gift of writing and being very personable with people. Yeah. Well, you know, this whole thing is, is that I believe things, you know, you really attract what you, what you really focus on it now. Yeah. But you know, they, there's a statement, you know, Hey, go ahead and dream, live your passion, but understand where your passion is driving you towards, you know? And the whole thing is like, like uh, to answer your question again, uh, AJ, but really understand that, but then really start to take advantage of social media opportunities to collaborate. Like here, Nina, you know, I really love your spirit. I knew from day one, you're a, you're a strong businesswoman. And I looked at, oh my gosh, we can spend a half hour talking about all your accolades, you know? And the whole thing is you have two shows, this one, the other one, live in Vegas and everything that you do here. But I just- but I also, hang on a second. I also do real estate and I also, yeah. and I also have an antique booth. And yeah, you, well, <laughs> oh my goodness. You but you know, I'm sorry, AJ. Right, radio show? Yeah. Yeah. And, you, yeah. and it's great that you're here because a lot of people still don't even want, want to get on Zoom. I can tell you love it. I can tell you love people. And the no. thing I love about you, you're confident, but here you are giving, 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 giving. And you know what? Sometimes people can look at people that are successful thinking, well, how do they climb to the top? No, no, I see. No. But you're having such a great time. Del West is the same way. As soon as I got to know him, you can see oh him. yes, he's exactly the same way. Exactly, the, he's oh very gosh. out there. He's helping people. He doesn't care who they are, what they are. Yeah. He's just out there to help. But also, wait a second, Jim. You are the same way. You're mm -hmm. out there giving as well. You're you're giving Thank whatever you. you've got to help Thank you. the yeah. community, your community, and also all communities. And you're out there to to to, to get this together. Can we have again um, the your upcoming um, thing in Vegas? Yeah, the um. So I'm sorry, you're asking for what? The upcoming event in Vegas. Oh yeah, our <laughs> upcoming event in Vegas, really awesome. Go to takecenterstagewritersjourney.com and uh, you know nominate an author again. Maybe you come to see how you can publicize your book. We've got powerful speakers I mentioned. And July 29th, come to have a great time and uh, you know just learn a lot on the, the days following. And you know what? You actually get a VIP pass for the whole event for the whole week. If you um, attend our thing, that's how generous Dell is, you know, cause this no. is the first, I believe this is one of the first one that the way he's launched uh, something like this in terms of writers specifically, he has other things going on, but I think this one's very special to a lot of people that are so deserving in terms of Absolutely. what uh, they're all they're very, very deserving. Um, we're coming to the end of our show and I just want to thank our audience out there um, for yeah. participating in and, and learning um, what we try to teach out there is, is don't give up. Keep keep on to what you want to do. You you have a gift. Put it out there. You you've got to share your gift with other people. But without anybody out there watching our show, nothing happens, right? Yeah. AJ, AJ, you want to say a couple of words? Yes, I just want to say thank you so much to Jim Chong. You're absolutely incredible, and you're a wonderful personality. You got a great heart, and I hope that we can collaborate with you and help you and grow our um, networking and the business and just you know, help people even more. I love what you're doing. And I love our Asian community and every, you know, yeah. even 
Portland, in Portland here, we have a Chinatown, so I love it. We love it. I think every city has a Chinatown, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, not every city, but let me tell you, nice. there is one town called Locke, California. Look it up. L-O-C-K-E. It's the last remaining Chinese rural town in the whole oh, really? United States. Yes. And 